Hello and welcome to the workshop. Today we're going to have a look at how the vintage pulse dial telephones work. So here we have our basic circuit. We have a meter connected so you can see what's happening to the voltages at the exchange. And let's begin. So at the moment we have a high voltage. That's because the handset is down which is pushing the switch open which means that electricity can't flow through the phone. So basically no currents being drawn so as you can see on our meter we've got a high voltage. That tells the exchange as I say that the handset is down. When we lift the handset up you can see the voltage drops. The reason for this is that this switch here on the handset springs back, makes a connection so now the voltage goes through the phone and because the phone is drawing current from the exchange the voltage drops. So when the exchange sees this voltage drop it knows that the handset has been picked up and it's now ready to make a call. Now the pulse dial system basically means that the phone exchange knows what number you are dialing by how many pulses it gets. So let's have a look at the meter, see what happens if say we dial a 5. So we go to the end stop, nothing happens, but when it springs back, look at the meter. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It just pulsed 5 times. That tells the telephone exchange we've just dialed a number 5. So what's going on here is that our circuit connected to the microphone here, the dial, as it springs back, that switch is opening one, two, three, four, five times. Now then, that pulse is going to make a lot of noise. So to prevent yourself getting a headache, there's another switch here on the dial. And what that does, as the dial is being used, it shorts out the speaker so that you can't hear all the noise during the dialing. The speaker doesn't draw that much current, so if we manually make and break this connection, you can see on the meter that it's not really doing anything at all. So we don't need to worry about this particular part of the circuit drawing much current. So let's have a look at this in action. So when we dial a number, there's a piece of plastic here and if you look, as I turn round, the two pieces of metal bend together, shorting out the speaker so you can't hear all the crackling. And if you look at this top switch here, you can see that as the dial, the dial is turning, it's moving up and down. So this is what's going to dial our numbers. Now the problem is that if that's all it done we'd have a problem because if we were to dial a 5 it would make and break 5 times as we went that way and another 5 times as we went back. That would then tell the phone exchange we've dialed a 10 not a 5. So how do they get around that problem? It's quite ingenious. We've got a little piece of plastic here which sort of spins around fairly loosely. So what happens, as we move our 5 to the end stop, watch what happens with the plastic and the metal. So the plastic moves out of the way, and the top piece of metal, that moves up, but the bottom piece of metal follows it. So basically both pieces of metal are moving together, so the connection is never broken. But when the dial springs back, what happens, that little bit of plastic it sticks out, it goes round and it then jams that bottom piece of metal. So now what happens, because the bottom piece of metal can't spring back, but the top can, when we get our five pulses, look, the top bit of metal is springing back, but the bottom can't, and now the connection's broken, and look at our meter, the voltage has gone up. So if we do this in slow motion, one pulse, the top bed of metal shorts again, 
and it opens again pulse number two shorts again opens again pulse number three and so on up to pulse number five so that's how this mechanism works and how the pulses are defined so of course the fine exchange will see all those voltages going up and down and each pulse of voltage as it were become the digit okay so we're going to put our headset down this now tells that our phone exchange that our conversation is over the voltage is high and it's ready to accept a ringtone now then the ringtone is an AC voltage this means that it will then be allowed to go through the capacitor in and out of the coils of the bell now this AC voltage goes up and down about 30 times a second that causes this bar to bounce backwards and forwards 30 times a second yeah. ringing, the, uh, ringing the bells so we can see that on the meter so if we were to dial this phone you'll see the, not just the voltage go all the way up but you'll actually see the, the needle of the meter bounce as the, yeah, the voltage is going up and down 30 times a second so let's see that in action Now what happens when you pick the phone up you can see the voltage drops way down because we've made our circuit the telephone exchange notices that and it then stops the ring voltages going because it knows the connection is made so basically when the connection is made then what's happening is that the microphone as you speak in it is causing the voltage to go up and down with your speech which is going back to this phone exchange also through the speaker as well which is why you can hear yourself talk so the voltage audio voltage is going here and also going that way to the other telephone wherever that's located and then when you put the handset down voltage rises phone exchange says oh call finished and then we're now ready for another phone call so hopefully that explains how these vintage phones work and it'll also give you an idea of how to maybe diagnose and repair which we can also do in another video thank you for watching